Hey guys, can healthy food be comforting or can comfort food be healthy? I think I have a recipe for that. So yes, it's the dead of summer. I was going to say winter, but the dead of summer and I want comfort food. I don't want a salad and nothing says comfort to me like mashed potatoes and a casserole. So what I have today is um, a chicken chicken shepherd's pie. I know I think the original version is lamb maybe um, and then some people do hamburger which I've done that but I want to do a little healthy spin on it and I'm doing chicken. Um, you can I'm using um, it's two it calls for two cups of chicken breast and I um, have cubed it up. I only used um, three like four ounce chicken breasts and I just put it in the oven and let them bake and then I cubed them up. You can boil them on the stove, whatever you want to do. Um, you can also use rotisserie chicken. That would be even easier. You can just go grab a rotisserie chicken from your grocery store and chop up that. I have not done ground chicken. Um, I have not tried that. You might want to try that if you wanted to do that. Um, and the first thing I did besides cook the chicken is put the potatoes on the stove to boil because that is your topping what an awesome pie to have potatoes on top you know but so that's cooking and when that gets done cooking i'll put um some olive oil and milk and salt and pepper in that and mash it up to make a, a mashed potato topping so here are the filling ingredients for our pie today um first is the uh, the mushrooms and the onions i have chopped up the mushrooms you don't necessarily have to do that um, you can just slice them, but I prefer to chop them. And then um, the uh, dried sherry. I use a half a cup of dried sherry. Um, also a fourth of a teaspoon of thyme goes in it. And then you use the one and a half cups of the chicken broth with three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. It's like a thickener. And then you also add peas and carrots. And then the chopped chicken, as I was telling you about, is about two cups. And I said I used about three chicken breasts they're about four ounces um, each and then you get a two quart baking dish here um, and then you spray that with a uh, spray to keep it from sticking to your pan and then we also add salt and pepper so the first thing we're going to do is add the onions and the mushrooms to saute i've put a, a tape uh, two tablespoons of olive oil in a pan and let it get warm or hot i should say So there's our onions and our mushrooms and you use the whole pack of the mushrooms and it's a large onion i really we, my family we really like onions so um, i think it really the recipe calls for a cup and i use just the largest onion i don't really measure the onion part and then you um use um one fourth teaspoon of thyme you sprinkle that in And so then you let this um, kind of soften up, wait for the um, onions to get a little translucent and the mushrooms to get cooked up. And you also add a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. And you set your oven on 400 and um, 400 degrees while um, let it preheat while you're getting your filling made and 
And the recipe will be um, in the description box below. So that way if you miss out on anything or I forget to say something, you'll get the full recipe. Now that the onions are translucent and the mushrooms have been cooked, you add half a cup of dry cooking sherry. And you let that cook till it's almost evaporated. You might could use white wine too. I have not tried that, so maybe I'll try that the next time and see how that goes. Now you can add the um, three tablespoons of all-purpose flour that you mixed with the one and a half cups of low-sodium chicken broth and just mix that together. It's just a thickener, almost like a gravy um, when you see the you know, final outcome of the pie. And you just mix this together. And then you will add the peas and carrots, and they can still be frozen. That's fine. You just add the peas and carrots and mix that together get that all combined doesn't that look delicious and now you can add the cubed chicken and just make sure you get it all combined and um, covered and um, you can you know turn the heat off now I'm sorry it's blurry right here I didn't even realize that it had gotten blurry it's just maybe my um, hunger taking in and <laughs> I can't see straight now because this looks so good so you just get that all mixed together and all combined. And then you can put it in your casserole dish. Now you just spread it evenly as you can in your casserole dish. And, um, and make sure you know that it is, you get it like a piece of chicken at least almost in every bite. And I, look at me just get making sure I clean that pan, make sure I get every single bite there. But um, just spread it evenly and um, make it kind of as flat as you can because you want to add the mashed potatoes on top. Okay, now the fun part happens where we can mash the potatoes. Um, all you have to do is just add um, uh, one half cup of low fat milk um, to your pot um, and you use about two pounds of uh, Yukon potatoes that you can cut into chunks and make it you know, boil faster. Um, and also you use, it calls for two tablespoons of olive oil, but I only use one because I ask, also add um, a little bit of the low sodium chicken broth to it to give more flavor. And I also added um, right there a half a teaspoon of salt. And here I actually added a half a teaspoon of pepper, which was a little too much. Um, it should have been a uh, one fourth teaspoon of pepper. It was still good, but it was just a little on the hot side, <laughs> but it was still very good. But you just mash it up until it becomes kind of nice and creamy. You don't want it too creamy, too soft. You still want it to have a little structure to it. Um, and here I am, I'm going to add some of the chicken broth. Um, it just gives it a lot more flavor. And even when you uh, cook mashed potatoes just as a side, um, it always is a great um, add to add in some chicken broth because it just gives it more flavor and make sure you use the low sodium um, and, and then you don't even have to use as much salt either but um, it makes it just have a little more flavor and I'm adding a little more because it's still a little dry you do want it you don't want it so creamy you just want it to have enough structure to hold up as your topping okay now it's time to put the mashed potatoes on top of your casserole I just put a few big plops all throughout and um, to make it easier to spread um, you just want to make sure that you get all of your mashed potatoes out because you want as much mashed potatoes as you possibly can have and just spread it evenly throughout the um, casserole dish it doesn't have to be perfect you know it is mashed potatoes all you know so you just get it um, just spread enough that you cover all the vegetables and um, that way everybody gets a little bit of mashed potatoes in every bite Okay, here it is, fresh out of the oven. Does that not look delicious? I mean, it looks like mashed potatoes and gravy. And make sure that if you like this video and want to see more recipes, that you hit the subscribe button down below. And like I said, all the instructions will be in the description box for the recipe. Thank you for watching.